Today we're going to discuss a game that I was obsessed with as a kid and I can't figure out why. The game is called Six Flags Fun Park and going into it as a kid, I thought that I was going to be able to run around an amusement park and go on rides. Well, that's not what this game is. Instead, you go on never ending fetch quests, plant some trees and pick up trash. I was thinking about this game recently and just really wondering what on earth I liked about it. So I decided to revisit it and it sure is something. Believe it or not, there is a story. It just takes quite a while to get to it. Yeah, this game is odd, so obviously that means I have to share it with all of you. Now first, I do want to go ahead and give a shout out to Much Games here on YouTube. I hope that's how you say it. They have the one and only long play of this game on YouTube, and since I'm currently unable to screen record my Wii, because yes, I do still own this game. I will be referencing their footage quite a bit throughout the video. Okay, now let's get into it. So you start the game up and are immediately met with this beautiful loading screen. Yeah, so that's what the characters look like in this game. And the first thing you get to do is make one of your own, while a bunch of other ones dance around in the background. Now you arrive at the amazing Six Flags Fun Park, a theme park divided into four sections, Hometown Square, Hurricane Harbor, Friend Fest, and Astro City. The game begins and you're greeted by a boy named Henry. This is when you get to hear the characters speak for the first time, and they talk in what I like to call Snoofs. Not only do you get to be serenaded by the sweet sound of snoofs from every person in this game, but sometimes during these conversations, the character you created will just start dancing. I feel like I'm in a fever dream. So you talk to Henry, and he is the unofficial junior mayor of Six Flags Fun Park, who is in charge of greeting guests. He tells you to go introduce yourself to the mayor, and off you go. Love the walking animation. You meet the mayor, who is shaped like Beaker for some reason. He gives you a hat, and then asks you to do a job for him because you owe him for the hat. Jerk. He says there's too many weeds around the park, and asks you to talk to someone named Planter Pete about it. You do, and he asks you to pull five weeds for him. I am a guest in this park! Why am I being forced to pull weeds? So throughout the game, you can earn coins and tickets, which you can then use to buy things or play games. One of the ways you can get these is by pulling weeds or picking up trash. Every time you do this, your character will make this noise. Whoa! And I mean every time. Whoa! 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 After you pull the weeds, Pete then asks you to plant five trees and pick up a package for him. I'm here to have fun. Why am I stuck running errands for Planter Pete? You have to get Pete's package from this guy named Jack, but he'll only give it to you if you deliver a package to Herman the Merman. But he only talks like a fish, so you ask Kevin the Kid for a translator, but he'll only give you one if you win him a stuffed parrot from one of the games. You work here! Why am I winning you a prize? If you couldn't tell, this game is just a never-ending string of quests. When I got this game as a kid, I thought that I was going to be able to go on rides, but instead I'm delivering packages and picking up trash. One string of quests is about this kid named Lou, who's stuck in jail. Since when do theme parks have jails? Lou says that he's starving and wants you to find his lunchbox that he dropped. Okay, not only does this park have a jail, but they're locking kids up and refusing to feed them. You ask Pete about it and he says he'll give you the lunchbox if you plant five bushes for him. Stop making me garden! You return to Lou and he tells you that he didn't actually do anything wrong. He was set up by this guy named Moose, but he refuses to say anything. Lou says to beat him in a game and then he'll have to tell the truth. Who knew that that's all it took to get someone to be honest? So then you kick Moose's butt in this awesome speedway game. He admits that he set Lou up, so he goes to jail in his place. So what was the crime exactly? Lou suggests you tell the mayor about how you helped him, so you do. And as a reward, he gives you permission to work at the food booths. This guy sucks. Then he tells you his life story. He and his dad opened the park together, and then things changed. But he won't tell you what. Fascinating. Then there's a string of quests revolving around this girl named Dark Debbie. She and her goth friends hang out in Fright Fest. Let me tell you, I thought Debbie was so cool as a kid, I wanted to be just like her. But when I look at her now... I don't know what I was thinking. So there are two quests involving Debbie. The first is searching for her missing brother. To complete this one, you, yup, you guessed it, do more garden for Pete and play games to win prizes for random employees. You eventually find him on this random island off the shore of Hurricane Harbor. The other Debbie quests involved her friend, Sonny Goth. He's super nice, and Debbie doesn't like this because that's not how goth people are supposed to act. So you basically just torture him to make him act miserable by giving him gross candy or forcing him to listen to bagpipes. But none of it works. He's still happy. Come on! Ah! 
Now that you've made friends with the goth kids, they give you permission to explore the hedge maze. Going to the hedge maze sucks. You travel around using what are called speed weeds. You go through one and end up in a new section of the maze. Then there are multiple speed weeds to choose from. Going through the correct one will advance you through the maze, while going through the wrong one will send you back to the start. I could not figure this out as a kid. I distinctly remember getting my parents to help, and we were all gathered around the TV trying to figure out which speed weed to go through. After slogging through the maze, you meet a ghost named Alexander, who is the first employee of the park. He wants you to talk to Pete because he'd like there to be more flowers planted. No, not more gardening. So now Pete gives us what might be the weirdest quest in the game. The fertilizer he's been using for his plants is leaving behind a green goo. So he gives it to you and tells you to ask the janitor in Astro City about it, who is definitely secretly an alien. And he tells you to throw it in a black hole that just so happens to be in the park, which causes this evil old guy to fly out of it. And he's from a parallel universe that he destroyed. What? Anyway, you run all over God's creation, completing tasks for Alexander, like getting him a pet toad. Then he tells you about how Mr. Mayor wasn't always the owner, and there's actually an abandoned section of the park called Funville that he keeps hidden away. But perhaps we can make it right again. Oh my God, there's actually a plot to this game? And it took us three hours to get to it? Alexander gives us a speed weed to Funville, and we meet this old guy called Gramps, and he's the one who built Six Flags Fun Park. He's like, one day I made an amazing park with my son, but it didn't last. I'm tired now. I'll tell you more later. You're tired? That was one sentence. Gramps misses the park, so we offer to rebuild it for him. He introduces us to this guy named Ralph, who shows us all of the broken rides and games in Funville. The rest of the game is mostly just quests about finding things to fix all the broken attractions. These quests include things such as freeing Moose from jail, playing every shooting game in the park, digging up weasels, and learning about clown tragedy. <laughs> During the quests, Gramps gives you more backstory. He says that he and his son didn't see eye to eye. His son was too obsessed with progress and walked off. He wonders where his son is now. Uh, Gramps? <laughs> He's not that far. You also talk to the mayor, who says that he broke all the rides in Funville to show his father that progress is important, but he hasn't smiled since. Imagine being that obsessed with progress. Once all the Funville attractions are fixed, you open it up to the public and everyone comes rushing in. I know the game wants you to think that Funville is this amazing place and it's still great even though it's old, but I actually hated it as a kid. I don't know why, I just thought it was stupid and I never wanted to go there. So the mayor shows up and is like, why are you doing this? I closed this place to get back at Gramps. He leaves, but he drops his watch and Henry asks you to return it. You go to where the mayor usually is, but this superhero was there for some reason and says the mayor is hiding. You talk to Gramps about it and he says that the mayor is probably at a secret hideout and you can only get there by being shot in a cannon. The mayor's hideout turns out to be this island. You give him the watch, which makes him sentimental because it's from his dad. Then it cuts to these pictures and says, good job, you helped a father and son reunite, but your adventure isn't over. You can explore the park. The game ends with these beautiful credits. So from here on, you're allowed to just explore the park until your heart's content. But if you remember, what I wanted from this game was to go on pretend rides, which it doesn't really have. And I didn't like playing the games because they were mostly just generic shooters with different backgrounds. So what did I do instead? I would just run around the different lands picking up trash. <laughs> this was somehow entertaining to me. I would never pick up trash in Funville though. I hated Funville. Now going through this story has raised one big question for me. What is Six Flags Fun Park? Now the obvious answer is a theme park, but is that really true? All of the people in the park act as though they live there. And at first glance, they all seem to be playing characters in the park, like at Disney, but those are actually their personalities. This dude really thinks he's a fish. This guy is actually an evil scientist. Alexander is a real ghost. Not to mention there's things like a jail, a pet store. I mean, they even have a mayor. People who you would guess our employees can have packages delivered to them. There's a group of goth kids that hang out in Fright Fest 24 seven. And then there's Funville. Gramps, Ralph, and all the other employees just stayed there for forever. I don't think they've ever left because Gramps wonders where his son is, which he'd know if he'd just step outside of Funville. So is this really a theme park? Because it seems like all of these people live here. Is it just a town that just so happens to have rides in it so they call it a park? Why am I, the main character, running around doing errands instead of just enjoying myself? Do I live here now? Can I leave? What? is this place. Well, on that unsettling note, I think we'll end today's video here. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about this weird game that I for some reason loved as a kid. Seriously, I can't figure out what I liked about it. It wasn't what I was expecting at all. I hated the mini games and I spent all of my free time after beating it picking up trash. 
Did any of you guys play this game? <laughs> I kind of doubt it. I don't think it was very popular. If there's a game you guys would like me to talk about though, just let me know in the comments below. I am open to any video game suggestions that you may have. <laughs> I mean, this video should be evidence enough that I am more than willing to talk about any game out there. <laughs> If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to support little old me. <laughs> and with that, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Wow!